Well, hello everybody. I'm Pastor Mike Burns, and this is Stewardship Friday. Today happens to be May the 20th, 2022. And we're very, very excited about the opportunity to share with you tonight a very special message that I have prepared uh, on this Stewardship Friday. You know, Monday through Thursday, we teach on God's healing word. But on Fridays, we deal with stewardship. And uh, we are, been, well, my wife and I have been in the ministry, as many of you know, for well over 40 years. Uh, we pastored for 35 years in Long Island, New York. We're graduates of Rama Bible Training Center, now college here in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now we're basing our life out of Oklahoma here, out of Broken Arrow, Tulsa, Oklahoma. And we're coming to you live on Facebook. We're also going to be rebroadcasting this show on our YouTube channel, on our Getter page, on our Truth Social page, on our LinkedIn page, on our Twitter page. I mean, we're really reaching out uh, as much as we can on social media. And uh, there's more to come, praise God. Anyway, uh, today being Stewardship Friday, I really felt like God was putting in my heart to share with our friends who watch our broadcast regarding how uh, our MJB Ministries is set up and how we're uh, running, how we're planning on things for the future and where we are currently. And I thought I would just take some time to share some of these great things uh, with you today. I want to pray right now, and I want to ask the Lord to help me to deliver the word uh, that I want to share today. Would you join me in prayer today? Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you so very much for the help of the Holy Spirit, who will think through my mind and speak through my lips tonight. Open the ears of the people, Holy Spirit. Open their minds and cause their hearts to be receptive to the things of the Word of God and about our ministry here at MJB Ministries. We've been serving you as you know for many many decades and we pray that you'll touch the hearts of people uh, in the way only you can touch them father we thank you today for doing what you want to do in their finances as well as in the finances of this ministry here where's your blessing upon our words today and upon all that we'll, we'll say and do in jesus name we covenant to give you all the glory for it in jesus name Amen and amen. Can I get a good hearty amen from somebody today? Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, I just want to, uh, as I'm preparing what I'm going to be sharing with you tonight, uh, I want to take some time uh, to really dig into some great truths. Uh, things that, that we've been sharing here uh that i think would be really really helpful uh to each of you today i'm looking because i have slides here that i want to uh put up here uh and i believe that uh these slides i've created will be a great help to you uh in what we'll be sharing and teaching today uh in god's word amen amen now, the first slot I have up here simply says this. I want to read it to you. God see the word began in October of 2015. That's uh, actually 2016. Just three months after I had seven strokes in three parts of my brain. You see, the first one happened on June 23rd. I had four strokes in my cerebellum. And then on July the 3rd, I had two strokes in my occipital and had to go back to the hospital by ambulance. Then on uh, July 30th, I experienced the seventh and final stroke in my medulla, which is located by the brainstem. These were not mini strokes uh, that resolved themselves, my friends. They were seven actual strokes can i get a hearty amen from somebody because this is something that was very very serious and something that could have really affected uh my life at the time i could have died and uh let me uh, share with you the next slide i have here the strokes that happened to me occurred as i was working out at the gym 
I suddenly felt myself falling to the left and grabbed a stack of weights to keep myself from falling. I got my composure back and then went and sat down. I immediately called my wife Cynthia and told her something was wrong as this was the third day in a row that I had this uh, feeling of falling. My son ran up to the gym and drove me home and my wife took me to the ER. Now I spent the rest of the day and night going through a series of tests. Those tests included MRIs, MRAs, CAT or CT scans, ultrasound tests of my carotid arteries, and a series of multiple blood tests. I really kind of felt that uh, <laughs> these tests were uh, like vampires. They drew so much blood out of me uh, that, that day. Now what happened was, uh, at 7 a.m. the next morning, I met with the neurologist, uh, hospitalist. He was actually a neurologist and hospitalist. and was. He told us, uh, my wife and I, at 7 a.m. in the morning, he told us that I had had four strokes in my cerebellum. Now, the scans revealed that they took that my left vertebral artery was occluded or blocked, and they believed that was the source of the strokes. My wife and I asked him several questions, but was told that there really was not anything that they could that could be done for me. He said statins have been shown to clean out plaque over a long period of time. The doctor then left, and my wife left to, to make calls to our church family and our and our families, and I and I laid there feeling probably as lonely as I had ever felt in my life. I cannot believe that at 54 years of age, I had suffered four strokes in my brain at that time. I want you to think about this. This was a very serious uh, situation. Now, as I lay there contemplating what I had just heard from the doctor, suddenly and rather unexpectedly, the presence of the Lord began to fill the uh, curtained off ER room and I heard, I literally heard, and to me it was audible, my Heavenly Father speak these words to me. He said, son, and I have to stop here and, and say that when he said son, it was the most loving thing I'd ever heard in my life. He said, son, I need you to understand that the weight of your words have brought about this consequence that you are experiencing. But if you will take the weight of my word, meaning the Bible, and put it in your heart and mouth and believe about yourself what I have said about you, then you will completely reverse the situation and you'll stand taller than you ever have before. Boy, oh boy, I tell you what, when that word came to me, I absolutely said to myself, this is uh, incredible. Now, I want to say this to you, that, that even though... I went on to have three more strokes. I had the word of the Lord and was standing on God's word in simple faith as I began to take the medicine of God's word and literally put it in my heart and in my mouth. I had been through some significant trials prior to the strokes that turned my words against myself. I literally, and I know some of you might find this hard to believe because here I was pastoring, but I literally hated myself. I hated the husband, the father, the pastor, and the man I had allowed myself to become. When God spoke to me as he did, that day I repented and asked him to forgive me for believing the enemy's lies and giving him the authority and the opportunity to afflict me as he did. The seventh stroke I had on July 30th kept me in the hospital for three days and I was discharged on August the 1st, 2016. Now, I had a choice. The choice I had after these seven strokes, I could either do what, what I knew my Heavenly Father had said to me or not do it. I chose to do what he said, and I've seen a complete reversal of these symptoms. The symptoms I had, I have a list here, was hypertension or high blood pressure, diabetes type 2. I had not had it up at that point, and then they said I did have it. 
I had high cholesterol. I had double vision that required me to wear an eye patch, and I'd have to switch the eye patch between the two eyes. I told my wife the only good thing about the double vision is that every time I looked at her, I saw two beautiful women, praise God. <laughs> Amen. But I also had a drooping mouth on my left side of my face. My mouth was drooping left on the left side. And I had a need uh, to use a cane in order to walk. And even had a shower chair to take a shower. And I also, and this is something I haven't really spoke a lot about, but I had an inability to sleep due to fear that tried to grip my mind. Now listen to me here. People that have had brain injuries and a stroke is, I had seven of them, is a brain injury. And it caused me to be afraid and I couldn't sleep. I'd wake up. So I'd get up, I'd get up several times during the night. I would I would get up at four or five in the morning and I'd, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't stay in the house. I'd have to go out and go for a walk at four or five in the morning. And I'd walk for an hour or two and things like that. But I want to say something. As you see on the screen here, these all have been reversed. Glory to God. Even my primary care physician, his name is Dr. Keith Horning, accepted Christ when he saw the incredible reversal of my case. Now, he said to me, and I didn't put this on the screen, he actually said to me, he said, I know a lot of patients who've had strokes, and I think he said he knew thousands of patients and people that have had strokes. He says, but I don't know anybody, is what he said to me. I don't know anybody who had seven strokes in three parts of their brain and is doing as well as I was doing. I'm telling you, this is a tremendous testimony here of God's uh, healing power. Now, look at this slide here I wrote. I wrote, what is the purpose of MJB Ministries? Why did God raise me up off this bed of affliction after all those years of pastoring? See, my wife Cynthia and I, we pastored the church that I founded back in 1984 in Long Island, New York for 35 years. At that time, it was called Christian Joy Fellowship, and eventually we renamed it as Real Church at Christian Joy Fellowship, but we focused more on real church, not the real church, not a real church, implying that all other churches were fake or anything like that, but real was an acronym, and real stood for Relevant Everyday Answers for Life. And uh, in Long Island, because mostly the Jewish and the Catholic, and there are a few Protestants in there, but many of the people didn't understand what a fellowship was, so that's why we changed our name to Real Church, and we kept legally the name Christian Joy Fellowship, Inc., and uh, we said that our goal as a church then was empowering people, strengthening families, and changing lives. Now, my wife, we spent 35 years there, but we left in September of 2018 and we have since re relocated to the Tulsa Broken Arrow area of Oklahoma, where we attended Rama Bible Training College in 1980-81. We are members currently in good standing with the Rama Ministerial Association International. Now, I want to say uh, something else to you here that I think is important because we're about to get into some of the meat and potatoes of this particular uh, thing I'm sharing today. The purpose of MJB Ministries is very simple. It's a one-word purpose. It's people. We care about people. You know, Dr. John C. Maxwell once said that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I'm not saying that others can't have this kind of caring attitude that I'm describing right now. But when you've been through what I've been through and you understand what suffering is from an experiential point of view, and I'm not saying that was God's best for me, that I have absolutely made a decision and in my heart it's just that way where I have a caring in my heart for people. I love people. Now, today our ministry is different. It's no longer a church ministry, though I retain the heart of a pastor. The three things that are, I believe are... Uh, signifying or keynoting uh, uh, MJB ministries are the three words of leadership, integrity, and power. Now, I'm about to share with you some other slides, and these slides I'm about to share with you have to do with um, 
Well, they have to do with where I believe our ministry is going to be going here in the next uh, number of years. And I'm very excited about it to share this with you. Now, in order for us to go forward as a ministry, uh, we have to have people like you who are watching us today or seeing this video uh, to be regular supporters financially and prayerfully of our ministry. Now, I'm going to share with you what I have uh, as our current monthly expenses. Now, we have a monthly newsletter that we send out to over, well, five right now, it's 579 people received this newsletter. Uh, and we sent it out through constant contact. Our monthly cost just to send that newsletter out, which gives us up to 2,500 people, is $45 every single month. Now, every year, that costs us $540 during the year. Now, my wife and I, in our home, and we have the office here in our home, uh, we have internet for broadcast, and that costs us $65 dollars per month or literally 700 and i think that says 80 dollars per year now we also have a, another account uh, called vimeo v-i-m-e-o now vimeo hosts all of our videos and live broadcasts uh, right now and we have over 700 videos that are stored there 700 videos that we've made over the last five and a half years, including some of our former church services. Now, we pay, uh, paid, we currently we're paying $20 per month, which is $240 a year. The thing with Vimeo is they have different tier levels, and we want to go up, and we're doing a free trial of the $50 a month business. Well, it's not really a month. You have to pay it, but we have a free trial good till June the 6th, I believe it is. And then we have to even decide to pay it all up at one time, $5.99, or we're going to go back to our uh, current membership, which is $20 a month, which they allow you to do that on a monthly basis. But we found out that the business tier level of Vimeo is not the one we really want to do. We want to go to the next level, uh, which is uh, the level that will cost us about $900 per year, and it has to be paid at once. We can actually broadcast on that next level, the professional level. We can actually broadcast through several platforms on the social media at one time. Plus, we have the ability to do more editing than we can do right now at our current level. Now, you might think, well, you're doing pretty good right now, Pastor Mike, but really, we want to do more than we're doing right now. Now, we also have a website, which is hosted by a company called ShareFee. Now, this cost us 55 hundred dollars per month and annually that website costs us six hundred and sixty dollars per year then we have what's called kindred giving this is the company that helps us with our giving platform and that costs us only 25 dollars per month or a little over around 300 dollars per year plus they have a per transaction fee that they they put on top of that now, we also have for our ministry, MJB Ministry mobile apps, uh, we pay $3.99 per month for MJB Ministry apps. And this is for both the Apple app and this is also for the Google Play Store app, which costs us there only $48 per year. Now, we have ongoing other monthly expenses. And I want to say that our office rental monthly is $400. I know you said it's in the home. But we wouldn't have got a bigger place that we got right now without the need for an office. And so the $400 would cover our cost, which is $4,800 per year. Now we have phone and utilities, and we're saying that costs us about $75 per month or $800 uh, per year. I'm sorry, $900 per year. Now, as I said earlier, we want to upgrade our Vimeo. Uh, which is going to give us the ability to broadcast to multiple platforms at once. Right now, we can only broadcast to one, but we have to put the go through the process of uploading it, and then we have to uh, do the rebroadcast and put the link on all these other platforms. We won't have to do that once we get to that next tier level. Now, we have a current debt, and our current debt is just really only $200 that we have for our new logo, which is God's Healing Word, that you saw earlier on the other slides. 
and that uh, is uh, for AdventureImage.com. A beautiful lady named Tiffany King, who we recommend AdventureImage.com to everybody looking to develop a website or have any graphic design work done. But we have we owe her right now two hundred dollars, and we want to pay that bill, and we need the support of the people. This has been coming out of my wife and I's pocket generally, but we want to have people like you do that. Now, let's talk about some projects that we want to do. The projects we want to do are, number one, publishing of two new books that I have already written, um, one called God's Healing Word, You Can Receive Your Miracle Today, and the second book, which I just finished reading, writing, is called The Devo Life, Seven, Seven Essentials for Christians. Now, this is a very, very uh, powerful, powerful uh, two books that I want to put on the market. Now, this would be in addition to our other three books, which are on the market right now, but we also need to reprint some of them. And let me tell you about that. Now, when reprinting Discover the Life You Were Born to Live, uh, we also want to reprint more copies of your companion study guide for Discover the Life That You Were Born to Live. And we need to also consider printing more of Church Happens what your pastor needs from the people they leave. Now, the cost will depend on the number of books that we print. Now, we're also needing some new equipment. One of the things we need, we have a computer right now, an iMac computer that goes back to 2014. It's eight years old. And we want to get a new computer, a new iMac computer. We also, uh, as you know, I've written hundreds of songs. And we want to start getting into music production. And uh, this would require us to not only get the new computer, because we can't even do it with the computer we have, but we want to get the recording software that Apple has out. Plus, we want to get a new electric guitar and lighting that we need for our other broadcast. Now, we have some lighting, but we need more. And then, of course, we have travel emergency fund. That's the last thing on the list here. Now, what do I mean by a travel emergency fund? Well, that would include when you're on the road out there, you never know what you're going to run into. You might end up needing a hotel that you have to pay for, rental cars you have to pay for, food, airfare, and other unexpected expenses while you we are traveling here. So this emergency fund is a very critical thing. So you can see all of these expenses that we've listed here, and every one of these expenses are things that we can not do by ourselves. We need people like you to partner with MJB Ministries. Now, uh, we want to do a lot more, but it's, again, finances are the, are the thing that keeps us back. Now, I just want to say this to you. I had a friend of mine that he uh, was a pastor, a great pastor leader who's in heaven now named Alan Granger. He told me this story one day that he met a pastor in California, in a very expensive part of California, I think down by the San Diego area, and uh, the man was renting a facility for his church. And Alan asked him, he said, why don't you have your own building? And the man said, well, real estate at the time was like $200 a square foot. It's probably higher than that now. And Alan looked at him and said, no, you didn't hear my question. He said, why don't you have your own building? And the man looked at Alan and said, well, you don't understand. You didn't hear my answer. It's real estate's $200 a square foot. And he said to me, he said, no, you didn't hear my question Third time, he asked him, why don't you have a building? And the man looked at him and, and said, okay, I give up. Why don't I have a building? And he Alan looked at this pastor and said to him, the reason you don't have a building is because you haven't gotten people to agree with you that your ministry is a viable ministry can make a real difference in this community. And so the man began to look around for property and he found this great land, piece of land on a, on a major inner, inner, inner highway. Well, he looked at the man and, uh, who owned the property, and what he said to the man was something very significant. He began to talk to him about the vision he had for families, for children, for youth. He talked about helping people that were having addictions. He began to share the vision that this pastor had with this man who owned this real estate. Well, this man who owned the real estate looked at him and said, you know something? He said, I like, I like the way you think. He goes, I like the way you're, you're working uh, and you, you want to bring all this to pass. He said, but I don't have the, the land to build the buildings. I don't have all I need to make it happen. 
And the man said, I tell you what, I'll work out a deal with you to buy this acreage. I have, he had several acres there on this, in this, on this major highway. And he actually sold this pass to the land at a reasonable price, worked out a deal for the man. And he was able to get in there, build the buildings in, uh, because he got somebody to agree with him. Well, I want to say to you, I need your agreement with me. You saw where we're going, where we are. And uh, it all involves one thing, and that's people. We want to help people today, praise God. Now, uh, I want to share one last thing with you that I think will be very, very uh, important to share here. Uh, it's called our part, all right? When I talk about our part, what I'm talking about here is I'm talking uh, literally about our part in the partnership. We will continue to minister God's word faithfully as long as there is life within us on social media, in book writing and publishing, in itinerant traveling ministry as doors continue to open in churches, conferences, business companies, camp meetings, prisons, nursing homes, and homeless shelters. Finally, our greatest responsibility is to pray for our partners on a regular basis as the Apostle Paul did in Ephesians 1, 15 through 23, Ephesians 3, 14 through 21, Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11, and Philippians chapter 4, verses 14 through 20, along with Colossians 1 and verse 9 uh, through 14. So we're telling you, if you become our partner, that this is exactly what you and I are going uh, to do. Praise God. Amen. Now, let me share with you your part. This would be your part here. Your part, my friend, let me just look at what I'm, what I'm looking at here. Your part is you agree to give the amount you feel impressed in your heart to give financially on a regular, weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly basis. It is your decision. You also agree to pray for MJB Ministries, which includes my wife, Cynthia, and myself, Michael Burns, uh, in the following areas. Now, here are the six prayer points that we're asking you to pray for us. Number one, pray for God's wisdom and direction to be made clear to us in every area. Number two, for divine protection in all of our travels. Number three, for many God-ordained open doors to minister God's word. Number four, for a greater manifestation of the supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit as listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13, and 14. And then number five, for greater revelation knowledge of God's word. And number six, for divine provision and for at least 50 more partners in 2002. Praise God. Now, let me bring the camera here to the front and let me talk to you here as we close this broadcast today. You know, uh, this I shared with you is something that's very intimate and I want to uh, absolutely share it uh, with you in the name of Jesus because without the help of people like you, we cannot possibly do what God has put in our hearts to do. Amen. Would you consider not only praying for us, but becoming a partner and make a commitment to our ministry? Now, I know our ministry is not as big as, say, Oral or Richard Roberts. It's not as big as Billy or Franklin Graham. It's not as big as Brother Copeland, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. It's not as big as Andrew Womack and the ministry of Karis and all those are valuable ministries of which we ourselves have given in support of all of their ministries over the years. But we're a younger ministry, not that we're young in the Lord, we passed through for 35 years, but we're new to this stage and phase of life and ministry we're in right now. And we're asking sincerely if you would consider helping us uh, to do what God's called us to do. I'm not asking this so I can line my own pockets with money, but so we could do the work of ministry. Yes, I've got some expenses I have to pay on an ongoing basis, but a lot of it is applied to the ministry of MJB Ministries. So you could do that by visiting 
uh, our website. Let me just put that information up on the screen. Uh, we want to make sure you have that uh, there. And uh, also, let me see where else. It's up here, I think. Yeah, there it is. You can actually uh, uh, visit our website at mjbministries.org forward slash giving. And if you would do that today, we would greatly appreciate uh, your consideration prayerfully in supporting us on a regular basis. Hey, my name is Pastor Michael J. Burns. Uh, again, we've proven ourselves in the years we've done ministry, but we need your help right now. And I'm asking for you to get on board with us and help us do what God has put in our hearts to do. Visit mjbministries.org. You can find out more about our ministry there and all the free things we're making available. Plus, you can go to mjbministries.org forward slash giving and either give a one-time gift or give as a partner, sign up to be a partner with our ministry. We certainly appreciate your consideration. Thank you so very much. I appreciate it. And I believe God will bless you for it. In Jesus' name, you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Praise God, a wonderful night as you honor and serve the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.